Jean Lanz, first Duc de Montebello, Prince de Siviers, the 10th of April 1769 to the 31st of May 1809, was a marshal of the empire. He was one of Napoleon's most daring and talented generals. Napoleon once commented on Lanz, "I found him a pygmy and left him a giant." A personal friend of the emperor, he was allowed to address him with the familiar "tu," as opposed to the formal "vu." Early life Lanz was born in the small town of Lectoré, in the Gers department in the south of France. He was the son of a Gascon small merchant, Jeanette Lanz son of Jean Lanz d. 1746, a farmer, and wife Jean Pamise d. 1770, and paternal grandson of Pierre Lane and wife Bernard Escocio, both died in 1721, and wife Cécile Forinon daughter of Bernard Forinon and wife Jean Marguerite Le Constery, and he was apprenticed in his teens to a dyer. He had little education, but his great strength and proficiency in many sports caused him in 1792 to be elected sergeant major of the Battalion of Volunteers of Gers, which he had joined on the breaking out of war between Spain and the French Republic. He served under General Marbot through the campaigns in the Pyrenees in 1793 and 1794, and rose by distinguished conduct to the rank of chef de brigade. However, in 1795, on the reform of the army introduced by the Thermidorians, he was dismissed from his rank. Campaigns of Italy and Egypt He re-enlisted as a simple volunteer in the French Armée d'Italie, and in its campaign of 1796, he again fought his way up to high rank, being eventually made a general of brigade by orders of Napoleon. He was distinguished in every battle. At the Battle of Bassano, he captured two enemy flags with his own hands and was wounded in the Battle of the Bridge of Arcoli while aiding Bonaparte to escape the Austrian advance. He was chosen by Bonaparte to accompany him to Egypt as commander in one of Kleber's brigades, in which capacity he greatly distinguished himself, especially on the retreat from Syria. He was wounded at the Battle of Aboukir. He went back to France with Bonaparte, and assisted him in his 1799 coup. After Bonaparte's take over and appointment as Consul of France, Lanz was promoted to the ranks of General of Division and Commandant of the Consular Guard. Back with the Armée d'Italie, Lanz commanded the advanced guard in the crossing of the Alps in 1800, was instrumental in winning the Battle of Montebello, from which he afterwards took his title, and bore the brunt of the Battle of Marengo. <laughs> Service to the Empire In 1801, Napoleon sent him as ambassador to Portugal. Opinions differ as to his merits in this capacity, Napoleon never made such use of him again. Lanz purchased the 17th century Chateau de Maisons, near Paris, in 1804 and had one of its state apartments redecorated for a visit from Napoleon. On the establishment of the empire, he was created a Marshal of France 1804 and commanded once more the advanced guard of a great French army in the campaign of Austerlitz. At Austerlitz, he had the left of the Grande Armée. In the 1806–07 campaign, he was at his best, commanding his corps with the greatest credit in the march through the Thuringian Forest, the action of Salfeld which is studied as a model today at the French Staff College and the Battle of Jena. His leadership of the advanced guard at Friedland was even more prominent. In 1807, Napoleon recreated the Duchy of Sevres and he granted it to lands after Prussia was forced to cede all her acquisitions from the second and third partitions of Poland. After this, Lanz was to be tested as a commander-in-chief, for Napoleon took him to Spain in 1808 and gave him a detached wing of the army, with which he won a victory over Castaños at Tadella on of November. In January 1809, he was sent to attempt the capture of Saragossa, and by 21 February, after one of the most stubborn defences in history, he was in possession of the place. He said, This damned Bonaparte is going to get us all killed, after his last campaign in Spain. In 1808, Napoleon created him Duc de Montebello, and in 1809, for the last time, gave him command of the advanced guard. He took part in the engagements around Ekmel and the advance on Vienna. With his corps, he led the French army across the Danube and bore the brunt, with Masséna, of the terrible Battle of Aspern-Essling. 
On the 22nd of May 1809, he received a mortal wound. His eldest son was made a peer of France by Louis XVIII. Topic: <laughs> Death. On the 22nd of May 1809, during a lull in the second day of the Battle of Aspern Essling, Marshal Lands went and sat down at the edge of a ditch, his hand over his eyes and his legs crossed. As he sat there, plunged in gloomy meditation on having seen his friend, General de Brigade Pouzet, decapitated mid-conversation by a cannonball, a second cannonball fired from a gun at Enzersdorf ricocheted and struck him just where his legs crossed. The knee pan of one was smashed, and the back sinews of the other torn. The marshal said, I am wounded, it's nothing much, give me your hand to help me up. He tried to rise, but could not. He was carried to the Tete de Pont, where the chief surgeons proceeded to dress his wound. One of the marshal's legs was amputated within two minutes by Dominique Jean Larry. He bore the operation with great courage, it was hardly over when Napoleon came up and, kneeling beside the stretcher, wept as he embraced the marshal. On 23 May, he was transported by boat to the finest house in Kaiseribersdorf. Eight days later, he succumbed to his wounds at daybreak on 31 May. Lands was initially buried in Les Invalides, Paris, but in 1810, he was exhumed and reinterred in the Pantheon National after a grandiose ceremony. <laughs> Family He married twice, in Perpignan, the 19th of March 1795 to Paulette Merrick, whom he divorced because of infidelity in 1800, after she had given birth to an illegitimate son while he was campaigning in Egypt. Jean-Claude Lanz de Montebello Montauban, the 12th of February 1799 to 1817, who died unmarried and without issue. He married secondly at Dornay's on the 16th of September 1800 to Louise Antoinette, Comtesse de Guayanouk, Paris, the 26th of February 1782, Paris, the 3rd of July 1856, by whom he had five children. Louis Napoleon, the 30th of July 1801 to the 19th of July 1874. Alfred Jean, the 11th of July 1802 to the 20th of June 1861. Jean Ernest, the 20th of July 1803 to the 24th of November 1882. Gustave Olivier, the 4th of December 1804 to the 25th of August 1875. Josephine Louise, the 4th of March 1806 to the 8th of November 1889, one who succeeded in his titles and three others who used the courtesy title of Baron. One of his direct descendants, Philippe Lanz de Montebello, was until 2008 the director of the Metropolitan Museum of Art. Assessment Lanz ranks with Louis Nicolas D. A. Vaut and André Masséna as the ablest of all of Napoleon's marshals. He was continually employed in tasks requiring the utmost resolution and daring, and more especially when the emperor's combinations depended upon the vigor and self-sacrifice of a detachment or fraction of the army. It was thus with Lands at Friedland and at Aspern as it was with D. A. Vaut at Austerlitz and Arstadt, and Napoleon's estimate of his subordinates' capacities can almost exactly be judged by the frequency with which he used them to prepare the way for his own shattering blow. Dependable generals with the usual military virtue, or careful and exact troop leaders like Soult and MacDonald, are kept under Napoleon's own hand for the final assault which he himself launched, the long hours of preparatory fighting against odds of two to one, which alone made the final blow possible, he entrusted only to men of extraordinary courage and high capacity for command. In his own words, he found Lanz a pygmy, and left him a giant. Lanz's place in his affections was never filled equals equals notes <laughs>